We're looking at problem number two from hypothesis testing one in web work. Uh, here's the situation. There, people are looking at some some watches. Some of the, of course, a watch usually runs a little bit fast or a little bit slow. The the uh, null hypothesis here is somebody is claiming that on the average these watches really come out to be zero. If you looked at all of them and just kind of averaged them, the the uh, the error would be would be zero. Somehow, miraculously, we know the standard deviation uh, for the population is 185 uh, seconds. Really, it's 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 unusual to be able to actually know that, but that makes the hypothesis testing much easier for us if we happen to do that because we can use the z distribution down here and uh, the central limit theorem works very directly for us. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to look at 35 watches and uh, after doing that we discover that uh, that the mean of those 35 the they're on the average they're running fast 115 okay so to find the p-value we're going to need to find this area and then two times that area because it's a, a two-tailed test. Uh, notice that what we're looking at, the alternative hypothesis here, is uh, that mu is not equal to zero. So that's telling us this is a two-tailed test, so we have to put that much on up there and find that much down there. So the the p-value will be this blue area times 2. Over here in R, I've calculated that blue area. Remember that p-norm calculates the area below 115 in a, distribution, in a normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of this much. We're getting that standard deviation from the central limit theorem. Okay, So, so that's really telling me uh, this... Uh, red area back here is telling me all of this area clear back here okay so to find this blue area I'm going to need to take one minus that particular amount so there's the blue area and then I, what I really need to do is two times that uh, oops that's not supposed to be happening there so uh, we're just two times in that blue area and that gives us that amount. Now notice that p-value is very low and when the p-value is low the null hypothesis must go. So what we're discovering here that that p-value is less than the alpha that we were talking about up here the significance level was uh, was going to be alpha is equal to 0 0.01 and notice that our p-value is much less than that. We could have also found that p-value in the following way. We could have taken this 115, translated it down here. We know how to do that. That's the critical value. Um, uh, th I'm sorry, that's the test statistic down there. And that's easy to find. It's going to be the 115 minus the mean, which in this case is just 0. So it's just going to be 115 divided by this standard deviation. We want to find out how many standard deviations away we are. That's what the standard normal distribution is looking at. So that calculation right there is going to be the, the test statistic. We can do that easily in, uh, in R or in, in web work. It's just going to be the 115 divided by something. The amount we're dividing by is 185 divided by the uh, square root of uh, 35. So there's the uh, the test statistic, and uh, we've calculated the p-value already. So now we and we notice that that p-value was uh, there is sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the null hypothesis because the p-value is low, so the null hypothesis must go. So we can quickly uh, uh, cut and paste these. 
edit copy that was uh, the p value uh, edit and paste that in there and the uh, the test statistic was this amount edit and copy and paste that in there we can check our answer. Okay, good luck.